You might think you want to be rich, but you don't. What you really want is to be wealthy. And if you don't understand the difference, you can make all the money in the world, but you will still be unhappy, stressed out, and forever income dependent. It took me a long time to actually learn what the difference was, and it wasn't until a conversation I was having with one of my mentors that it really clicked for me. I had done pretty well. I'd built a business, you know, I was on Forbes 30 under 30, you name it, and I was just stressed out. Work was just really grinding me, and I just thought, you know, maybe I can just take a break. So I was having a conversation with him, and I was like, listen, you know, just spitballing ideas here. And I was like, do, do you ever just want to go away and just sit on an island, drink mojitos, just live on the island and just chill? And I thought he was gonna be like, oh yeah, I get it, you know, I've been there. But instead, he looked at me like I was a crazy person. And after he calmed down, he thought about it, and he goes, you know, you could do that, or you could just work a little bit harder, and you could own the island. And in the moment, that hit me in the chest like a punch. I was just, oh, I get it. This is the difference between being rich and wealthy. And when he said that, it hit me like a ton of bricks. It was the first time I felt like I actually got it. I had a rich mindset. He had a wealthy mindset. And the wealthy think differently. So in this video, I want to talk about how the rich think, how the wealthy think, and how you can move from the rich camp to the wealthy camp. It's a mindset shift that will change your life. So rich people, by definition, have lots of money. That's why we call them rich. But they are one mistake, one bad turn in the market, one layoff away from financial ruin. I mean, just look at some of the highest earners in society, professional athletes. Professional athletes earn millions, tens of millions of dollars per year while they're playing. And yet, after retirement, just three years, 78% of them go broke. And the reason for this really comes down to three things. First, rich people have an earnings mindset. They think I need to earn more to enjoy more in life. So the more that I earn, the more I can buy, the more things I can get, and they accumulate things through the act of earning. This is why high paid athletes earn a ton of money and then go bankrupt. They are on the earning treadmill. Now alongside that, they use their earnings to buy liabilities through the use of debt. That's a bunch of fancy words, so let me break it down. Basically, as you earn more and more money, the bank will give you a larger loan. They think you're good for it. And so what rich people do is they buy things like fancy cars, fancy houses using debt. And over time, this debt piles up more and more, but the rich people don't care. They're enjoying it. They are leveraging the tool of debt as a way to expand their lifestyle. They get bigger homes, faster cars, you name it. But these things they're buying are not assets. They're what are called liabilities. Every month, they owe payments on these things, even though they may be losing value. That Ferrari that they bought last year for 350000 the next year is only worth 320000 So they've lost $30,000 just by owning it, and they owe the bank interest and payments and so on. And so they're trapped because they're buying liabilities with debt. And as a result of all of this, rich people actually never feel secure. I can't tell you how many friends I have that are rich, but are constantly worried about money. And honestly, the stats show why. Did you know that one in every three Americans making at least $250,000 a year lives paycheck to paycheck? Doesn't matter how much money you earn, if you don't break out of this rich mindset, you're always one failure away from ruin. Now, unlike rich people, wealthy people live a little differently. They don't worry about the market's day-to-day -day fluctuations, what the Fed is doing here, what bank is failing. In fact, this is gonna sound ridiculous, but I bank with FRB and FRB recently went bankrupt. As it was going under, I actually just left my money in it. I knew it was under the FDIC limit of $250,000, although it was pretty close. And I was like, you know, I'm not gonna lose my money. Maybe I will lose access to it for a few weeks or whatever. I'll be fine. I have diverse accounts, so on and so forth. And I was just like, I just can't be bothered to go in, start a different bank account, take my money out, move it around. I'm just gonna leave it. And I'm not telling you this to like brag that I left my money in a bank that failed. It's more like, I just didn't care. I knew that there was a good chance the bank would go under. I knew that ultimately my money was secure, the government would sort it out. And I just had other things to worry about. I was traveling, I was in Taipei, I was in London. And I was just like, you know what? I got better things to worry about than a couple hundred grand in a bank account. And I'm sorry if that sounds like a humble brag. I promise it's not. I just wanna illustrate the difference so you can understand where you can get to as well. The three mindsets of the wealthy are first, they have an investment mindset. Rather than thinking the more I earn, the more I can purchase, wealthy people think the larger my investment portfolio, the more income that will naturally generate off of that portfolio and the more I can spend. And at certain levels of wealth, usually around the 50 to $100 million mark, 
Wealthy people actually have dedicated businesses just to managing their own money. They call it a family office or a single family office. All it means is there's a bunch of people that literally just manage the wealthy person's money and turn it into more money. So it doesn't matter you know, if the markets go up this day, down tomorrow, if the Fed raises interest rates, they have a long-term strategy with a large investment portfolio so their lives are steady and secure. Now, alongside that, the way that they use debt is different than the rich people. While rich people are taking out debt to buy liabilities, wealthy people are leveraging debt to buy assets. And assets are things that grow, things that appreciate, things that throw off income for you. And so they're not taking debt to buy things that they can't naturally afford. They're taking debt to literally make more money. Let's say they borrow at 3% interest, put that into investment that they know will make them 10%. They get 7% gain from that. And so it's literally free money for them. And this mindset of actually using debt and money to make more money is what makes wealthy people wealthier. And when you combine this investment mindset with this understanding of debt and how to make more money from your money, that's where you get to the final, which is abundance mindset. Wealthy people don't stress. They don't worry about money. They know that the markets are gonna do their thing, but their investment portfolio is secure. Sure, sometimes the number's bigger, sometimes the number's smaller, but at the end of the day, their spending is secure. They can travel, they can rent their yachts, they can go on different trips, whatever they wanna do. It's all taken care of by their investment portfolio so they can just relax and enjoy life. And the way the wealthy pull this off is they use what's called the 4% rule. Basically, the 4% rule is a mathematically driven formula that shows you how much of your investment portfolio you can pull out every single year to pay for your lifestyle without ever running out of money. So while you're slaving away at your job, the wealthy are off sipping champagne on their yachts using the 4% rule, never stressing. Here's a quick breakdown of how it works. So the average stock market returns for the last 100 years have been roughly 8%. So you might think, oh, I can just take out 8% every year, but that's not the way the stock market works. It's not a linear return curve. Some years the stock market might gain 20%. Some years the stock market loses 20%. So what the mathematicians have figured out that it's about 4% you can pull out every year without actually ever losing money. And so this 4% funds a wealthy lifestyle. Now, every person's lifestyle is different. Your wealthy lifestyle might only need $100,000 a year. Other people might need a million dollars a year. One exercise that you can do, and I think is extremely valuable, is actually sit down and write out all the things you would do in your dream life. Maybe you would rent this boat, you know, three times a year in the Caribbean. Maybe you'd own these houses. Map it all out and then find out what would the monthly cost of all of that be? Break it down. So if it's a $200,000 car, well, how much would that car actually cost on a monthly basis? And then once you have your monthly number, multiply it by 12 and then divide by 0.04. This will give you the exact number on how large your investment portfolio needs to be to automatically afford your wealthy lifestyle. And again, that number is different. It's up to you. Figure out what it's gonna be and then set that as a target. And then once you know your goal, once you know your target, you need to orient your life to get to that goal as quickly as possible, legally, of course. This is exactly what I did. I did the math, found my number, built a business, sold the business, actually surpassed my target, and now I get to live this wealthy lifestyle. So I highly encourage you to take the you know, five, 10 minutes it takes to do this exercise. It can really orient your life and give you a target. Now, if you wanna learn how to actually make the money, I just made a video on the smartest path to becoming a young millionaire. I'll put the link over here. Just click that and it has everything you need to know. I'll see you there.